we live in this oblivion that our thoughts don't really matter. And if you continue to live in that echo chamber, that void, that isolation chamber, that bubble of delusion, that you don't realize that your thoughts materialize, that your thoughts are added to the ethers, the atmosphere of this planet, and they come together with other thoughts of like vibration. And if there's enough mass to that electromagnetic shape of the, that particular type of thought that you're having, it will manifest. How am I responsible for Australian forest fires? <laughs> Please elaborate. Cute. So to those who don't understand the context for this question, a couple times in the past, I've blamed everyone listening to me for the forest fires in Australia and the horrid deaths of the koalas. As a reflection of the fact that you caused that. So it's just simple. You did. But you don't understand how. How am I responsible for Australian forest fires? Well, how are you not? This is not your planet. Is everything not a manifestation of you? If you get the depths of this, then you understand that you were responsible for that in some way, shape, or form to some degree. You didn't prevent it. You prioritized other things during your day-to-day -day life. Sloppy thinking, distracted thinking, blame-based thinking, accusational thinking, judgment-based thinking. All that accumulates in the ethers and will manifest itself as burning koala bears. That is your fault directly, 100%. People don't understand how connected everything is and how Earth, everything that happens and materializes on Earth from volcanoes to solar flares to wildfires to economic distress to governmental change, everything essentially is a reflection of the atmosphere of human collective consciousness. So if you were not in a perfect state of alignment all the time, then you did contribute to the forest fires in Australia. It's plain and simple. It is physics. Some like to call it metaphysics because they can't see it. It doesn't mean it's not physics. It is physics. It is invisible physics. You contributed to the forest fires in Australia by sloppy thinking, by accusational, judgmental, misaligned, thinking by not praising and aligning yourself to source all the time. So why do I use that example or why have I used that example? Well, why do you think? What does it cause when you hear that? What does it bring up in you when you are being accused of being responsible for the forest fires in Australia or any other calamity. How does that make you feel? If it generates a big smile on your face, you get it. You get the message. Not because you're laughing at the forest fires in Australia, but because you're having the inside into the perfection, the connection of all things, and that you are indeed responsible for all things, and that that no longer bothers you or stresses you out, it puts a smile on your face to hear that reminder that you have that power and that you know that you, in a sense, should pay more attention to where your mind wanders. So it inspires you towards self-mastery. And therefore, you're happy and excited because you know that very intention, that very realization is going to help you master your life. This harkens back on a previous conversation we've had 
about you cannot change what you do not own. You cannot master what you do not own. You cannot transcend what you do not acknowledge. And as we'll get into this a little bit later with another question that I saw about the discipline of the personality, you cannot really accept what you don't know is there. So we live in this oblivion that our thoughts don't really matter. And if you continue to live in that echo chamber, that void, that isolation chamber, that bubble of delusion, that you don't realize that your thoughts materialize, that your thoughts are added to the ethers, the atmosphere of this planet, and they come together with other thoughts of like vibration. And if there's enough mass to that electromagnetic shape of the, that particular type of thought that you're having, it will manifest. It will kill people. It will cause fires. It will do all these nasty things. And conversely, if there's enough holistic, sacred ge geometry type of patterns in your thoughts, deliberate, aligned, rooted in love and oneness, they will, too will find companions in the atmosphere, in the ethers, in the electromagnetic subtle body of planet Earth, and that will gather mass just as well. And this will also manifest in beautiful ways on planet Earth. But to think that you are not responsible for those forest fires is foolish. It is folly. It is simply not true. You do contribute. You contribute all the time. And I like the way Abraham Hicks made this clear once when they said, if a brick would land on your face every time you had a negative thought, you would start paying attention. We live in this echo chamber of delusion that our thoughts don't matter, that they don't produce matter, that they don't materialize. But they do. They are matter. Thoughts are matter. They are shapes. They are symbols. They are intentions. They are vibrations. They are very real. Thoughts are just as real as anything else. I mean, ultimately, it's all unreal. Don't get me wrong. But as far as life goes, the sensible world, the things that you can experience and know and that appear, thoughts are just as real as the phone in my hand. So to think, to assume, and we often do because we don't see the evidence right away. And that's part of the struggle. If you take a physical action, if you slap yourself in the face, you feel it right away. So you stop slapping yourself in the face. But you slap yourself in the face all the time with your thinking, but you don't feel it right away, or you don't associate it with the thoughts. The results of the thoughts are often not associated with the thoughts that cause them. You don't make the connection. Oh, why is this happening to me? Because you're a sloppy thinker. Because you don't care about the next thought that bubbles up in your mind. You don't care to correct it. You don't care to align it. You don't care to impose your superior consciousness over the inferior consciousness of the human mind. You don't care to bring forth the power of I am and to shine with that presence through this flimsy fabric of mind, which without your I am presence, without your conscious deliberate presence, just does whatever the hell it wants whatever it remembers from a past impression, whatever reaction it thinks it's best in that moment. And it goes completely unguided if you're not there to guide it. And then you wonder, why is this happening? Why is this not happening? Why is this happening? Why is this not happening? It's like slapping yourself in the face sim symbolically with a delay. You have a sloppy thought yesterday, and tomorrow something happens and you don't make the connection that it's because of your sloppy thinking from the day before. So once you get this, once you can see more clearly outside of your echo chamber of delusion, like, oh, my thoughts don't matter anyway. I have the right to be depressed. No, you don't. No, you don't. I have the right to judge myself. No, you don't. You bloody don't. Because every time you do, you cause some disaster for someone else on this planet. You're contributing to the destructive energy of this planet. So it's not just your right to feel how you feel. 
You see, because it's also not just your right to slap everyone else in the face, right? You wouldn't say that. So why do you do that with your sloppy thinking? Why do you slap everyone in the face with your sloppy thinking? Why do you contribute to negative catalysts all over this planet for your family, your friends, your neighbors, your children, your parents, and everyone you have never met that are also your friends, you just don't know it yet? Why would you smack them in the face with a hammer and call it your right? It's not your right to be sloppy. Once you see how connected this universe is, you understand your responsibility. With great power, which you have, you're just choosing to be oblivious to it, comes great responsibility, as Uncle Ben once said to Spider-Man. You get the point. We think, we assume, it's a delusion, it's ignorance, it's obliviousness. We assume it's our right to be depressed, to be negative sometimes, to have a bad day. I'm not saying to judge yourself because that would be more negativity. I'm saying it's not your right to have a bad day. It's acceptable when it occurs, but I'm saying it's not your right to be depressed because it's not just you that you're affecting by that choice. You're not in an echo chamber. You're in a connected world. The entire planet and beyond is your echo chamber. You are co-creators, co-shapers of the very fabric of reality. And it starts with the atmosphere of mind, of consciousness, your state of being. And if you're not there to control your mind, then who is? Who is responsible for that little bugger, huh? Who is responsible for the next thought that arises for you? And then there's this whole non-dual kind of false movement of like, yeah, but you don't have any free will. And it just arises and they prove that the thought's already really there before you recognize it. There's no real free will. And so they hide behind that. But who is responsible for your next thought? And if you know that that thought influences the collective, the entirety of creation, then how could you say that it's your right to suffer unnecessarily, randomly, sloppily, because it only affects your body? It does not. Yes, you have the right to slap yourself in the face because that only affects your body. But you know that it's not your right to slap other people in the face unless you have perhaps a really, really good cause occasionally. But in general, you wouldn't say it's my right to slap other people in the face because it's not my body. But metaphysically, everything is your body and it's all connected. So the next time you think, oh, it's just me that's feeling like a victim and that's perpetuating negative sloppy thinking and it's not taking charge of my life, my destiny, my purpose, my alignment, my desire to come from love, to know God, to know source, think again. So yes, I'm increasing your burden here. I'm increasing your burden by a lot, by about 8 billion times. And I'm being generous because that's not the full extent of what you affect in this universe, but at least it's a tangible example. Every thought you have, you're inflicting upon 8 billion human beings. Once you realize this, the sooner you realize this and stop hiding from that responsibility, that full ownership of self, that complete acknowledgement of what is going on here. For as long as you ignore that, you will not master yourself. You will not find connection to God, not really, not deeply, not profoundly, not viscerally. And you will not be of service to others as much as you would like. So you got to see this like a quantum soup, right? Everything is connected and you're responsible for every thought you have because who else? Now, I'm not saying to give your thoughts significance because they don't have any significance. What do I mean by this? When you have a thought and you give it significance, you're, you're strapped to it. You're trapped in it. You're caught up in it. You can't do much with it. You're exacerbating it. If a negative thought arises, the way to deal with it responsibly is to acknowledge that it arises and then to not give it any further significance to the best of your ability. To not attribute more negative meaning to it because that's just more negative thought and it continues to compound. 
And remember, you're infusing this planet with your vibrations all the time. Can't escape that fact. It's as matter of fact as me drinking some coffee. So I hope this makes sense, and I hope this lands with a sense of love and honor and potential for your own liberation. This is not to beat you over the head even more. But sometimes raising the burden actually dissolves the burden. Either have no burden whatsoever in the way that you think, or carry a lot of burden because it dissolves all those tiny little sloppy burdens that don't put you on track. Does this make sense? You know, when you're carrying kind of half thoughts, half burdens, half responsibility, and you're suffering and you're kind of struggling and it feels like moving through mud, either let it all go, say, I'm not responsible for any of it, and free your vibration in that sense, or take ownership, responsibility of all of it to a degree where you realize the impact that it has on the world, on yourself, and that there's nobody else to blame but you. When you do that, somehow, it transcends this sort of choppy, muddy middle stage where you don't take any real mastery. You don't take charge. You don't correct yourself. You're just kind of in this complaining victim state where you don't want it and you don't want the discomfort and you don't want the ownership of it. But you also, you're not changing it. You're not realigning yourself. You're not transcending it. So it's kind of an all or nothing game, my friends. Either disown everything or own everything. Become nothing or become everything. This is true in, in all endeavors. If you be nothing, it will go well. If you're all of it, it will go well. It's the in-between. It's the I am separate from the situation. I'm only partially responsible for it. That's the burden. But take on all the burden, and the burden disappears somehow. It makes room for liberation, for clear direction, for clear intent, for forgiveness, for healing, for wholeness. So that's why I use those examples that some people think are radical, which I think not radical at all. It's just observational. 